What's going on guys? My name is Mark Wagner and I'm so glad that you clicked on this video. In this video, I get to sit down and interview Kevin Gordon, who is definitely one of the most impressive people that I have ever met. Kevin started Convertus, which is an automotive company that made an eight-figure exit within about five or six years, which is incredibly impressive. Now, Kevin is definitely one of the most um, advanced mental thinkers that I have ever had a chance to sit down with. So I definitely hope that you just take the time to watch this video, absorb just the little things and what he is saying, and I'm sure that you will get a ton of value out of it. So let's go ahead and hop right into the video. Also, before the video starts, I just want to apologize really quickly for all of the noise in the background. We recorded this beach side and it was also like right next to a construction site, which kind of sucks, but you should still be able to hear every single word said in this interview, even if there is a little bit of background noise. So, sorry again and enjoy the interview. <laughs> All right, Kevin, thank you so much for sitting down with me. So for those of you that don't know, right now I'm currently in Bali at the Limitless Summit hosted by Kevin Gordon. And I got the opportunity to sit down with him for a little bit and talk about his story, what makes him tick, and really just how he got to where he is today. So thank you for joining me. And um, yeah, welcome. Thanks for having me, buddy. Yeah, so would you mind just explaining really quickly, a couple minutes, um, just how you got to the point where you're at today and um, just, I guess, um, yeah, how you were able to obtain the, I don't know, for those of you that don't know, Kevin is, uh, he's very, um, I don't want to say flashy, but very, um, <laughs> very open about his Lamborghini and his lifestyle, which definitely motivates a lot of people, and that's kind of what attracted me to him. So, yeah, All you right. want to just explain that a little sure. bit? Sure. All right, so my entrepreneurial journey started age 15. I started an eBay store. And that's where I got bit by the bug, right? I yeah. saw there was an opportunity to have more freedom, more control of my life, and yeah. I could do that all from within my uh, basement at my parents' house. So that was really exciting, right? Sure. So some parallels in our stories in the sense that you started early. So once I got a taste of that, I was hooked. I had a number of different companies I started. I started to gain experience, some momentum, um, some resources, which I, I, I just parlayed into the next uh, venture and the next venture. And then my big one, which was when I was 27, I started a company called Convertis, which was uh, a technology company. We built software and a system of tools that car dealerships and auto manufacturers could use to better manage and market their businesses. And within five years, uh, my kind of, this is like my tagline, within five years we scaled from my apartment to a team of 100 people. We never raised capital. We spent no money on marketing. And we were actually acquired by our largest competitor, Auto Trader, for eight figures. Okay. So you mentioned no no venture capital. So how much did you start with, Kevin? A whopping five hundred dollars. So $500. I had one business partner. Uh, his name's uh, Nicholas Williams. Really great guy. He's one of my close friends. We both invested five hundred dollars. That money went into eight hundred dollars. Went into the incorporation of the company to cover legal fees, yeah. and then two hundred dollars into business cards. And that was our, our venture capital. We never had to reinvest more money in the business after that. That's incredible. All right. How many business cards did you get for that? That's, that's oh, hard. okay, so those were normal business cards at the oh, time. Okay. Yeah, so the fancy all metal ones, those yeah. came later on. That's not a, necessarily a great investment right off the bat. Gotcha. <laughs> for those of you that don't know, well, no one really knows this, yeah. but um, Kevin has these incredible business cards. Um, just like, I don't even know how to describe them, but they would make your draw job, and that's kind of the whole yeah. point of them. Yeah. Yeah, so when I was young, right, I was I was the face of this company. I was going meeting with these CEOs and presidents of large companies like auto manufacturers or auto groups. I had to get them to take me seriously, yeah. right? That's a challenge that any uh, teen or 20-something year old entrepreneur is gonna deal with. Yeah. Um, and so I invested in a couple things, like great business cards. I had really nice suits at the time. I was always very well prepared. So I did everything to shift the, the power and the, the odds in my favor when I'd have these meetings to get them to take me seriously. And a business card is a, is a really easy way to do that because even if you're meeting with like the president of an auto manufacturer, he's probably not gonna have a business card that's die cut, made of stainless steel, has a whole bunch of like intricate patterns on it. Yeah. So even initially that first impression completely changes. Every single person I hand you would go, oh my God, this is an amazing card. Where'd yeah. you get this? Or how much does it cost? How much does it cost? Ah, they were about $12 a card. Well, 
dollars. Yeah. So basically, a lunch, a card. <laughs> you go buy a cheap lunch for the price of a card. But wow. it was worth it for me. Once, yeah. uh, once we were a little further along, you obviously have to have some revenue to justify that. Um, but worth a lot of investment for me for sure. Cool. So going back to the start of Convertis, what would you, like if you could go back and do it again? What would you do different? You know, there's there's not a whole lot. I'm really fortunate to say there's not a whole lot we would do differently. Um, like we're really good about re reinvesting in the business. We're very disciplined with our cost, um, like management, right? We didn't scale up our expenses too much. Um, I would have made a few different decisions in terms of hiring. Like there's a learning curve there. I think I hired about 150 people now over the course of my career. I, I don't know if it's realistic though to think that every hire is going to be a good hire. Yeah. But there's some stuff early on, like I probably would have been more diligent and thorough with our with some of our early hires. You know, I yeah. think we were just like, we were so excited and probably just let our, if we liked someone's personality, that was maybe, there was too much bias or preference put on that. Um, and then just some basic stuff too, like um, understanding um, what our company would be. Like we, we pivoted multiple times. Like we changed our business name, like three months in, our company name. Um, we changed our logo, of course, at the same time. Um, we went from 10 solutions to about three. And, and that is, I think there's a natural learning curve. I don't necessarily think those are bad things. Um, however, I think we maybe could have avoided some of that stuff and started off um, right earlier if we maybe didn't come out of the gate quite as quickly as we did. So we were talking about like crawling versus walking versus running versus sprinting. Um, sometimes I think entrepreneurs actually go a little bit too fast in the beginning, which sure. so can be counterintuitive. Everyone yeah. wants to go into sprint mode. Sometimes it's better to actually just crawl or walk for a bit until you figure out what direction you want to travel in. And then once you have that confidence and certainty, then you can start to jog or run or sprint. Awesome. That really blew my mind, um, by the way, the jog, run, sprint kind of thing, because I always figured these high level entrepreneurs are just constantly sprinting around and that's what like separates them from the people that they're just like jogging and stuff. So um, yeah, definitely help me out. Um, another thing that I kind of want to address, a lot of people watching this, I'm more of a younger audience, like 16, 17, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I think building an eight figure company will probably be, I mean, they just not necessarily out of reach, but not even something that they'd be thinking about right, right. now. So would you say that when you kind of set up your company, were you going for eight figures? Did you structure it that way? No, I really I really didn't. I also didn't structure it to be acquired either. Yeah. It was really just like, I've embraced this philosophy. I think the first person I, said, I heard say it was Will Smith. I don't know if he pioneered this concept, but he said, um, like, don't focus on building a wall or a house. He said, just focus on laying one brick as perfectly as possible and then lay that second brick as perfectly as possible. And if you do that every single day, eventually that structure will start to come together. I think some people get too far off, uh, too caught up thinking you know, of that big picture, looking at the, the macro, right? Yeah. For me, I was very much a one brick at a time, one day at a time guy focused on the micro. And when you do that, you're not thinking about some massive eight-figure exit and Lambos and penthouses and being in Bali. Yeah. You're just thinking about making the right decisions, make, taking the right actions on that, on that day. And I think when people do that, when they focus on those micro inputs and building just the best business possible, building the best team possible, building the best uh, product possible and, and retaining clients, like providing them the best service, then that's how you end up with an eight-figure business. I think if you try to build an eight-figure business, you yeah. compromise yourself by making different decisions by trying to fast-track things, which goes back to the sprint. Yeah. Right. That's really interesting because you would think that you know when you're really focused on like perfecting that one brick, that you're going to move extremely slow. Yet eight figures in five years is not extremely slow by any means. No, I think avoiding making those, and there were times where we moved faster, right? Yeah. But especially initially, it, it, like if you lay a brick and you lay it in like the ocean, like what good does it do, right? Yeah. And a lot of entrepreneurs do that. Like they're so, they have such a sense of urgency at the beginning just to like do stuff and take action that they make decisions which are counterintuitive. And maybe they actually go the complete wrong direction. Like they, they should be going north, north, but they're going south, right? And yeah. so if you slow down a little bit, spend a little more time to think, establish your direction, build a great team, build a great product, avoid those big um, missteps that are gonna cost you a lot of money or reputation, then later on, then you can go into hyper growth mode. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so going back to the like 16, 17 year old type of thing, yeah. um, 
What? All right. So, sixteen-year-old comes up to you right now and asks yeah. you for one piece of advice. What would you say? Yeah, I'd say at that point, the most valuable thing you can do is start to develop your mind, develop your skills, right? And for me, I'm very much a hands-on person. Yeah. I tinkered around with eBay and Craigslist, e-commerce at that age, but FBA now is huge, right? Like, there's more opportunities than when I was uh, now than when I was when you were my age. Um, so for me, I'd say get your hands dirty. Don't worry about making money, but start to understand, assuming you want to be um, like a tech entrepreneur, I think so many of them want to be, right? I mean, yeah. there's a lot of people are watching these podcasts that want to start maybe like a restaurant so much or a hotel, right? <laughs> yeah, they yeah. want to start an online business. Sure. Yeah. And so for me, it's getting your hands dirty. Start an eBay store, get into FBA, even if that's not going to be your end goal. Um, and don't make money make, making money be your end goal at this point. It should be just understanding business fundamentals. So business acumen, financial literacy, discipline, time management, marketing, branding, copywriting. Start to build that core foundation of skills because that's what's going to allow you to be immensely successful later on. Like, don't don't worry about being crazy successful at twenty. You've got so much time left, right? Like, focus it like it being like financially free by thirty. Right, and that's why I talk about like the, the crawl or the walk or the jog. I think so many people have this like pressure put on them right now by social media. You see people driving their Lambos and in their mansions. They're like, I want that right now, yeah. or I want that next year. For sure. But the reality is, that's a one in a million shot or one in ten million shot. However, if you start laying the groundwork now and you have a ten year runway, I think that becomes a heck of a lot more reasonable and predictable. Okay. So in order to build your core principles. Uh, like you were just talking about, would you say that you just gained yours from startups or did you go into like college or how did you get those skills? No, so I started my first um, business at age 15. Uh, I didn't go to university or college after. Um, for me, I just decided to actually get practical experience. Um, and for me, I only really ever had like one proper job. I worked. Um, for the Jim Pattison uh, group, which is a, a massive corporation. So that gave me a taste of what that, that corporate world is like. And, and it's a lot like the, that uh, slower to move, it's called sticky red tape. Basically there's a lot of restrictions. That kind of showed me that um, I really do want to be in entrepreneurship so I have more flexibility, right? I don't like to have a whole bunch of rules or limitations. Um, but for me, I learned basically everything practically and very little theoretically. Gosh. Okay. So, I'm curious, obviously you're in a pretty good position right now, you sold your company, what, like two years ago? Yeah, not even, um, yeah, it should be two years in about uh, a month, I guess, actually, yeah. Awesome, yeah. Alright, so, I don't necessarily know what the past two years have looked like, obviously, considering you set up this incredible event, I would say you're doing alright, <laughs> but I'm curious, what do you think the next step is for you? Yeah, so right now I'm focused more on creating impact and value than I am about like monetizing. So I've got uh, a charity right now called The Driven Project, and I've got what we're doing here, the Limitless Summit, where I'm working with uh, young entrepreneurs and trying to fulfill their potential. Those are my two main focuses right now. I'm starting to get like hungrier and more energy, uh, more drive to get to get back into business and everything. But I'm kind of enjoying this more relaxed, value focused side. Yeah. But I mean, you just have to stay tuned to see what I do next. I guess. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh really? Yep. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> All right. So you you say you kind of want to get back into it. Uh, we were kind of having this discussion earlier, and I think that you probably. Um, I mean, this may not for the benefit of the podcast, I can cut this out, but um, you say that, you know, you really want, I, I, at least from what I observe, I think that you really want to hit that next level. Um, you seem really hungry, and it seems like the stuff you're doing now isn't necessarily bigger yeah. than Convertis, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, would you be interested in doing that necessarily with a business or with a charity? Yeah, I'm always looking for ways to level myself up, right? Like my mind, my body, and my potential. Yeah. Um, and then also create incremental amounts of value and impact, like on our local community and then abroad as well. So I'd say one of my one of my tendencies I developed over the years is just being perpetually open-minded to opportunities as they either cross my plate if someone brings them across to me or if they cross my mind. Yeah. So I think that's a strength. I think some people sometimes get this like tunnel vision on a certain goal and there's there's times where that's beneficial as well. But I think having that open-mindedness on, hey, maybe even though I placed 
14 bricks over here, maybe I'm in a completely wrong area and I just have to scrap these 14 bricks and move over here. Yeah. So for me, this event, even this interview, everything I'm doing right now is helping me work towards figuring out what that next chapter is. Interesting. Do you have any like long-term goals that you have yet to accomplish? I'm, I'm figuring out what my goals are now. Like most of my, my trajectory, my effort is put in towards like impact, you know, giving back, whether it's philanthropy or helping entrepreneurs or just ambitious people who have big dreams. It's hard to quantify those things. It's easier in business. You can look at stuff like like revenue or an exit and stuff like that. But I've already, yeah. I'm already comfortable in that regard. So it's like, you know, like I look at um, with my charity that we work with kids who have life threatening illnesses. Like every single time one of those kids tells me that my charity helped give them the best experience of their life. Like that's a great KPI, right? Yeah, that's I, awesome. I kind of put that in my pocket and I'm like, if I was to die today, or if I think about like my legacy, what do I leave behind? The impact I'm making on people like that is probably the thing I value most. But again, it's really difficult to quantify that, right? <laughs> yeah. Do you have any aspirations to take the German project to not necessarily like um, Vancouver? Like I know that you do other cities as yeah. well, but um, what if you had an event in every major city yeah. every single week? Kind of thing? I love it, but it's just a difficult thing to scale because safety, right? We've yeah. got, we got these um, children in supercars that can be like, danger and safety issues. So that's our biggest thing stopping us right now from taking it broader. All right, Kevin, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you guys got a lot of value out of this. And again, just go follow Kevin on Instagram. He's doing some incredible stuff. And like he said, you follow him, you probably going to see what's next in his incredible journey so far. All right. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Thank buddy. Pleasure. <laughs> All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you got a ton of value out of it. If you enjoy hearing me interview other successful entrepreneurs, then definitely let me know in the comments. If you want me to stick to Shopify videos, then definitely let me know in the comments. However, I definitely would appreciate it if there's any problems that you are currently having uh, as far as e-commerce goes or even like just entrepreneurial problems in general definitely let me know in the comments because I'm definitely trying to make videos that you would find useful. It's kind of hard for me at this position in my journey to make content that would just benefit my audience that I have not already made. So definitely let me know in the comments if there's anything that you guys are struggling with. Again, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,